Hey guys, what's up? Josh here. And today I'm going to talk about something a little bit taboo for artists. So I've found that creatives really struggle with marketing, especially the artists. And they tend to fall on a spectrum somewhere. So they either want to reach the masses or they're completely averse to the idea of marketing because it's selling out or it feels sleazy or they have this idea that their work should speak for itself. And I get it. I get it on both sides. I understand. But rather than be averse to marketing or think that marketing means reaching the masses, what if we rethought that idea? What if marketing was simply creating relationships by being helpful to other people? Because once you have enough relationships, you have a market. Now, it, it does feel to me like there's a problem with the whole idea of mass outreach and impersonal marketing, so I agree on a lot of the points with artists feeling bad about mass marketing, so paying for views, likes, or whatever else, that's, that's really, that's not marketing, that's advertising. And I've done that, I've paid for ads for tattooing clients before, but it always felt like I was just burning money, and I didn't, I didn't really like how I felt at the end of the day either. Um, I really, I really just felt like a douchebag. <laughs> but one rule that I've, I've found really helps, and I, I learned this much, much later. But you never, you never pay to promote something that isn't already selling. That way, you never advertise shitty products or services. You only advertise the stuff that's working on its own to amplify it. But what about attracting rabid fans? Because we, we do want to attract fans as artists. And, and whenever it comes to attracting those fans, I, I really like to use the laws of gravity. So you collect a bunch of small shit at first, and then you roll that ball around until it collects bigger and bigger stuff. So where did this idea come from? I mean, the way I just described it, it came from the dung beetle, but <laughs> the, the concept has been on the internet for quite a while. Uh, I think the most famous example was uh, Kevin Kelly's blog post, 1000 True Fans, and he wrote that 15 years ago as of the time I'm recording this. And holy shit, that makes me feel old. <laughs> but Kevin realized something back then in 2008 that anyone can create an audience of 1,000 true fans with the internet and according to his math that's how many true fans he figured it would take to support a creative career pretty comfortably and he's really not wrong Derek Sivers and Seth Godin both write about ethical marketing to the minimum viable audience too, so they've, they've really expanded on this idea. So instead of focusing on going mass market, you focus on being helpful to the smallest group of people that could support you. It, it's a really holistic approach to building an audience and marketing. It's not the Silicon Valley approach where you get investors and you try to disrupt an entire market. It's, it's, you just, you try to help a small group of people and they will make sure you're comfortable. <laughs> Derek Sivers work in particular really resonates with me as an artist. And I actually love all of his books, but if you want like the ultimate primer on marketing, check out your music and people by Derek Sivers. It's one of the best books on marketing I've ever read in my life. And it's super short. But the main thread between all of these authors and thinkers is the same. So you start small and you focus on being helpful. The idea of this 
really hit home for me recently when I listened to a conversation between Mark Manson and Tim Ferriss. So they brought up a nearly perfect analogy that's similar to the dung beetle analogy that I dropped earlier. So it's the Katamari Damashi. It's a video game, a Japanese video game, which roughly translates to soul clump. <laughs> and the, the story of the game, to the best of my understanding, is about a tiny prince whose father destroys the stars and the moon. So it's your job as the tiny prince to use the katamari, or tiny ball, to recreate the moon and the stars. So you, you have to roll around this ball collecting small shit like thumbtacks and paper clips. And as the ball gets bigger, it can pick up bigger stuff, like airplanes or mountains. And to me, this, this really sounded a lot like gravity. So it works just like gravity. The more mass an object has, the more pull it has. So if we, if we take a step back and just apply the laws of gravity to our marketing and our relationships, it might look something like helping one person at a time. If you help one person every day, you'll have helped over 1,000 people in three years. And in my experience, after you reach a certain level of mass in your tribe, you start to attract more and more people, like a really big fucking magnet or a dung beetle's soul clump. So if you build your tribe to the size of a moon, you'll have enough gravity to keep space trash in orbit and astronauts on your surface. Or if you build an audience the size of a planet, you're big enough to keep moons and space stations and Elon's satellites in orbits, and, and then a star. At that point, you're big enough to attract an entire solar system. Eventually, you could be so famous that you're a black hole, completely corrupt and sucking the light out of everything that gets close to you. But, you know, that's, that's probably not a good thing. Still, this, this point shows that it's easy to see how scale can build to something massive. But if you want to avoid becoming that black hole, it pays to remember that it starts with attracting the, the thumbtacks and the paperclips, the small stuff. So don't forget where you started. When you build really authentic relationships with a tiny audience, it can grow from there. But when you start by reaching for the stars before you've collected any of the smaller pieces, well, at that point, it'll probably always be out of reach unless you're very, very lucky. And I don't like relying on luck. So how do we, how do we approach people if if we want them to be our raving fans. I tried to clarify that last week. I tried to clear the waters and I failed. Uh, I think what I ended up doing was just a, a brain vomit into the water and I made it really uh, murky or pukey. <laughs> it, it didn't clear the water anyway. So I'm gonna lay it out as a four step process. I think step by step is about as clear as it can possibly get. So step one, Forget yourself and find a group of people that you want to help. You, you really have to prioritize your audience over yourself. So that's why it pays to, to cultivate an audience in a group that you're already a part of. So if you're already a part of a group, you can really have empathy for the people who are like you. You can understand their pain and you can listen. So step two, get curious about your audience one person at a time you you have to really suspend your own assumptions here um, and we, we tend to have a shit ton of assumptions about what will help someone but unless we suspend our assumptions and listen for what their pain is you, you really can't figure it out so forget that and sit with one person that you're trying to help ask questions and listen to their answers take some notes Step three, this is, this is a really tricky one. Help people however you can. That doesn't mean sell people your product. That means help solve whatever problems they have and that might not be the problems you expected. But if you can make a good impression by helping that random person you met at Comic-Con by 
recommending a contractor for their roofing issue that they mentioned, you'll still have a fan and a friend for life. And this is really hard to do because we want to get our work in front of people. But the best way to build relationships is by helping other people solve their problems, not forcing your solution or your product or your art on that person. Focus on the, the relationships and the friendships first, and then everything else will take care of itself. So let's, let's move on to step four. Repeat all of this a lot. Uh, so some of your people will buy your art and some of your connections will point you to really cool opportunities that you never expected. And your best people will refer you to their friends or introduce you to their friends who just happen to be a lot like them. Now this is this is the birds of a feather conversation or, or something like that, but your best clients tend to be friends with other people who could also be your best clients. So really, really try to cultivate good relationships with your favorite people. And that's it. That's the four step process. Forget yourself, get curious, help people however you can, and then repeat like shampoo and conditioning your hair and just repeat a lot. <laughs> and notice how your art rarely comes into the picture here. You don't build an audience by selling stuff. Whether your product is your art, a class, a community, it really doesn't matter. Your only focus should be helping other people that are in a group that you want to help. And some of those people will help you back. And some of those people will also be interested in your art. Now, what's really fucking cool about this is that your fans will help you find the art that resonates with both you and them. They will end up informing your art, whatever your art may be. So they, they will help you with your writing. They will tell you what they want to learn from you. They will buy the paintings that you make that resonate with them that you also enjoyed creating. They will turn into a tribe that you can help while they help you. I'm really fortunate as a, a tattoo artist, so I have to work one-on-one -on -one with all of my clients. And some of those clients end up being my favorite people. So I make a real effort to add my favorite clients to my tribe. So I'll take notes on what's going on in their lives after every session or sit down. I'll try to keep them in mind and make introductions or suggest books or articles based on shit that we've talked about during our sessions. And I'll just keep an eye out for cool stuff that I can share with my favorite clients. We build real relationships. And that has slowly but surely grown my tribe full of raving fans and those raving fans also happen to be clients who want more of my art but that's not what turned them into fans in the first place it was a friendship it was the unselfish attention directed toward them i always thought about what was in it for them and not me so my challenge to you, dear artists and creators, is to stop trying to reach everyone all at once. And if you're one of the, the holier-than-thou loner artists who think that their work should speak for itself and spread, stop pretending that other people aren't important to your success. No matter which camp you fall into, take the counterintuitive approach and try to help one person, and that's it. Forget yourself, get curious, help someone fix a problem they're having, and then do it again, and again, and again. Then, let your friends, and fans, and community influence your art, whatever your art may be. And eventually, the laws of gravity will take over, and you'll start attracting more fans with more influence. Just remember to start small, and focus there. So on that note, I wish you luck, I wish you fortitude, and I really wish you some patience, because 
This, this isn't a shortcut, sweetheart. You're gonna have to work hard. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for some more stuff like this. If you've got a minute, leave a comment and let me know what your plans are for building an audience. And remember, fuck advertising, build relationships that matter. And if you really, really liked this video, make sure you share it with your friends. And until next time, keep creating.